Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And you guessed it. We've done it again. You've done it again. Uh, we have yet another amazing guest this morning, stay-at-home mom who's building a booming online business while balancing busy family. Uh, who can relate to that? At least the balancing busy family part, busy life. I mean, even if you don't have family, sometimes your dogs can keep you busy. Um, balance is just something that we're all striving for that seems to be somewhat of an elusive monster that we can never really tame. But what if we could tame it? What if we could access it, or at least some of it, while building a business and kind of moving towards more financial stability and security, uh, doing that in a more comfortable way? Uh, specifically by working from home or working from your computer or even your phone, right? Which is um, one of the great benefits of this here tool that we have in our hands today. It's a gift. It's also a curse. We can spend time wasting it, scrolling, consuming, uh, or we can use this beautiful little device to uh, help us build a business. Uh, each guest that we have on this show, if you're brand new uh, and just coming or tuning in, uh, we, uh, we don't script, plan, prompt, prep anybody on this show. You hear it uh, as I'm hearing it. Um, somebody could get on here and go wild and say crazy things. And well, we're live. You would hear that right from the horse's mouth. Hopefully today we also have uh, uninterrupted Facebook service. As many of you know, yesterday we had a big outage, okay? The world stopped for about two hours. I know many of you didn't know what to do with yourselves. I was a little stumped as well, especially since the outage happened right during the middle of the show. So hopefully we have uninterrupted, no technical Facebook Zuckerberg gremlins who are going to come out to try to get us today and we can have a wonderful conversation with... Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, man, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. It's exciting to have you here. Um, talk to us about how you got here. How did you, you know, stumble upon us? What were you looking for? And uh, what have you found since being here? Well, it's a really funny story, actually. Um, so I just had a baby in July mm. and it was around That's June. I was like sitting there, you know, beach dwell and just trying to figure out what do I want to do? Do I want to go back to work? Because I'm a teacher and I knew I would have time off and we were getting ready to move. I have a very crazy life, Dave. Um, and so I came across someone at that time and saw the course. I remember laying in bed specifically and I was just like, nah. <laughs> like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what this is. I, I'm, I don't think this is for me. So then we move and I'm scrolling on my phone. And of course, you know, once we've seen it once, other people start trickling down our socials. And the funny, I swear it's a God thing because I was on someone else's video and I was trying to read it. And then I guess as I was holding the baby, my finger happened to hit someone else's name. And I'm sure it was because they like followed that person or whatever. And no. then it happened to be Caroline Hene. Mm. And I saw her and I was like, I know this person. Like personally, I know this person. <laughs> and I, of course, started just stalking all of her stuff. And I was like, this is Caroline. Oh, my goodness. So backstory, our husbands worked together in San Diego. They wow. were in the Navy together. Wow. They deployed together. They were very, very close. Um, Caroline and I hadn't like hung out per se, but we had gone to church together, all the things. And wow. so I called my husband. I said, when you get home, we need to have a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, you're going to think that I'm crazy because it's just one of these other things, you know? Yeah. And I was like, I actually saw this months ago and I just didn't want to jump on it. But now that I see that she has done it, and she, you know, tells her story of how she had no idea what she was doing. She has no history in marketing and just the growth that she had. I was like, if she can do this, I can do this. And he was like, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I took the course. That was in October. So from 
June until October. That's when I, it really hit me. Um, took the course and got everything going. But of course, I wanted to wait until everything was perfect before I launched. Yeah, of course. Um, but then it got to a point that I was just like, I'm tired of waiting until it's perfect. It's never going to be perfect. And so I shot my first video randomly sitting in the car at my daughter's doctor's appointment <laughs> and posted it to Instagram and just started it then. But, but yeah, so it's just, it's been crazy. Like seeing someone that I knew, um, actually do it. And I hate that it took that because the potential is there. And that's what I tell my audience all the time. Like, don't be like me. Don't wait until you see that person, you know, cause they may never come by. Like, let me be that person to tell you my story and that it, that it works and that you're able to put these systems in the play and build your own business. Wow. Wow. What a, what an interesting journey getting here. And it's always nice to see somebody that, you know, um, most people who see people that they know doing things have the opposite reaction. Unfortunately, it's a reaction sometimes of kind of negativity, skepticism, doubt, jealousy, uh, and, uh, you know, a host of other emotions uh, that keep them from taking action and becoming curious. Mm -hmm. They instead become judgmental. And I, I want to just, you know, validate you for being curious and, and having that kind of curious attitude uh, about yourself um, cause that really is, you know, such a valuable perspective and approach in all of entrepreneurship. It's going to be something that will serve you well. And I hope everybody is able to take that away from the story. Um, because I'm sure you now are experiencing Sarah, if you haven't, you certainly will, you know, people who are not curious in a positive way about what you're doing. <laughs> And you have to learn how to navigate that, yeah. whether it be friends, family, you know, people that, you know, another thing, oh, she's doing another thing. What is it this time, Sarah? Yeah. Right? Kind of that condescending, mm -hmm. passive aggressive type comments. Mm -hmm. uh, have you had any of those in, in, in being the positive, curious person that you, that you are or have been? How do you navigate and handle when somebody is not po positive and curious towards what you're doing? Well, that's when I come out with, you know, proof, honestly, <laughs> and I show them the people who have come before me. But essentially, I mean, I was definitely nervous to tell anyone whenever mm -hmm. I first launched, as most of us are. We're like, let's just keep this hidden over here. We're not going to say anything. We're just going to do our thing. But then some people find you because it's like recommended and I remember as people would find me, I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to talk to them soon. Oh, they're going to bring it up. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, I was most nervous about my parents because oh. mm -hmm. just being like the older generation and all of the new age internet ways to make money from home, you yeah. know, it is hard to believe and it's hard to believe that you can escape that nine to five and reach retirement. Um, but I was so excited because when I did slowly bring it up to my mom and then my dad, I mean, I look up to my dad so much because he really guides me financially. Um, I was most nervous for him to know, but he was so supportive and trying to give me ideas of what I could do and, and different like legal things. He wants me to make sure that I'm staying on top of to ensure I don't run into anything. Um, but I haven't, I've had a few like, you know, people who've commented on my stuff. Um, so, you know, depending on the comment that I might choose to address it, like in a video, um, cause they'll use like the different terms to describe what legendary might be. And I'm like, actually it's not. And so then I just provide them the information of what it really is. And so I feel like they can't really argue with that. <laughs> yeah. So talk to us a little bit about why this is different from some, something or things that you've tried in the past. How is your approach different? How is, is the landscape, the internet technology different? How is this business model different? Is your mindset different? Just contrast this with times where you've gotten ready to got ready to do something mm -hmm. in the past, whether it was an, another entrepreneurial venture or network marketing. I think you wrote that in your questionnaire. Right. Mm -hmm. Different about this for you. So in the past, I mean, like I said, um, I don't know if I gave all the details, but whenever my husband and I got married, I wasn't finished with college yet with my bachelor's degree. 
Mm. And we got married, moved the next day to San Diego. So everything just sort of changed. I had to figure out how to do school online, which at that time, it wasn't easy to switch from residential to online and try to figure everything out. Um, I had always dreamed of being a cosmetologist. That was my like first dream, but being from one of the poorest counties in Tennessee, you weren't going to make a lot of money doing cosmetology. Um, yeah. So I waited till we were in San Diego to do that. But even whenever I went and became a cosmetologist, I only got to really work in the salon for a year mm. and my husband deployed and I didn't want to be there by myself. So I came home to Tennessee, spent time with family, finished my bachelor's degree. Cause I was like, if I can just get this done, then I'll have that under my belt. Well, we knew that we were only going to be in San Diego after his deployment for one year. I don't need to go and try to build clientele. It takes you about five years to build a solid clientele when you're doing hair. Mm. So I said, well, I'll use my degree, which I have a, a bachelor's in um, communication studies with a minor in marketing. And so I have an idea of marketing. I still feel like affiliate marketing, you're learning so much, especially since it's been a while since I've been in the marketing realm. So I did do, um, internet marketing with um, a company and I focused on veterinarians specifically. We provided, you know, the websites, the branding, all the different things. Mm -hmm. So I worked there for a year. And I think the biggest thing with all of this is that now that I'm pursuing this venture and I have done network marketing um, to, to speak on the differences of that is that again, there was still the whole like skeptical side of it. Can you really do anything with this? I was, um, working with a jewelry company. I worked with like a weight loss company. Um, there's so many different things that you have to do to show the product, to show, you know, proof that you're losing weight or staying fit, having parties. Um, this is so different because you don't have all of that weighing on you. You can legit just speak into your phone, take a video, talk with people online, um, explain the value with it. So there's, there's that difference there compared to net network marketing. Um, but specifically now is that we are finally, we, we moved from San Diego to, to Lynchburg, Virginia, to now we're in, um, Tennessee again. And now I know that I'm going to be here for a while <laughs> and I haven't had that, that beauty, um, with any of my positions before I couldn't really fully commit because yeah. I never knew where I was going to be. Yeah. Um, and, and I even got my master's to become a teacher because I was like, okay, once we get somewhere, I can just be a teacher, yeah. but Lord bless teachers. I mean, I, I love teaching. I love kids, but it is so much when you've worked in like a sales position where all you're doing is sitting and talking to people all day and you can get, you know, really good money to then being on your feet all day, trying to wear all the hats that a teacher wears and you, and you feel all of this, this pressure and love to be so much to these kids. Yeah and barely get paid anything. It's just so hard. And then especially as a mom, when you want to come home and be all of those things to your own kids and you're just yeah. zonked. Yeah. So while I have been home on my maternity leave, I was like, I want to see what's out there. I want to see what I can do from home, soak up these moments. And so that's the difference with this venture is that I was like, I'm not giving up. I'm going full on full throttle and mm -hmm. I, I'm here. <laughs> so, and, and the good thing about this business is that if we do have to move again, it can move with me. Right. <laughs> so I don't I, have that stress. I was thinking that as you were talking about cosmetology or even if you're a teacher, you're move, if you're moving around a lot, that's not only disruptive to you, you but it's also mm -hmm. disruptive to the students who, if, if you have to move in the middle of the year, now mm -hmm. all of a sudden they're losing their teacher. And my, my, kids um, in the Montessori school that they go to, you know, my daughter uh, is, is seven now. She was with the same teacher for three years. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. they put three to six year olds in the same class and then kind of keep kids together for for three years at a time um, for many reasons. But one is that they really get a chance to get to know the teacher. The teacher gets to know them and can guide them. So, um, yes, God bless teachers. Um, I wish we could save the world, change the world. I wish we could, I wish I had a magic wand I could wave to, you know, increase their pay and, and get them the respect and the, and the compensation that they deserve. 
Um, I think people have been trying to do that for a long time and mm -hmm. still seem to struggle with that here in America anyways. And I don't get it, Yeah. Um, but it is what it is. And it is rather, dis did you just hear that phone ringing? I did. <laughs> oh, okay. You did. Yeah. I didn't, yeah. Know if, I didn't know if that was coming through. Um, fascinating that I still, you know, I don't know how to turn that off. I, I, I'm curious, like people think that I'm, um, it's technically Tech savvy. savvy. Yeah. Like if anybody knows, honestly, if, if anybody knows how to like turn your FaceTime phone from off to, to, to stop ringing when you're on your computer, put it in the comments. Let me know. Like, I'm serious. Like I, I know I should Google this, be resourceful, but uh, put it on do not disturb, says Shaka. I don't even know how to do that. Like, how do you even put it on do not disturb? So anyways, we'll come back to that. I'm sure some people will turn off my Bluetooth. Is that, can I do that? I don't know. Shaka, you're sending me ideas here. It's like you don't really know. You're just kind of want, like, I need somebody who knows. Okay, on the MacBook, it's in the right-hand corner, I think. Folks, I need stop. <laughs> I need step by step training. Okay. Um, We're so, always learning. <laughs> so, so, um, Dave, don't you have a tech crew to help you, Catherine? I'm not a guru. I, I don't have. This is not a highly produced show. I'm literally just sitting in my, in my, my, um, you know, <laughs> office, my gym office here. It's just me. There's no producers. There's no like this is this is as kind of down to earth as it gets. Uh, there's nobody here. Um, so, no, it's just me. It's literally just me. Now, yes, we have other people in the company, but they're not here with me. So I'm relying on you. Yes, Casey, this is real life. Um, SOS, <laughs> Ryan and Drew. Yes, I need to I need to show up to a hot seat. I need to show up to a hot seat coaching call. Ask my kid, says, uh, says uh, Adabaya, uh, Ab Abadaya. So, Sarah, back to you. Um, <laughs> tell us one thing that stuck, stood out to you as you were going through the, the challenge or the blueprints that you are like, wow, that was a light bulb moment, or this made it all worth it for me, or putting these pieces together for me really was a kind of defining moment for you in terms of getting clarity or direction or just feeling like you had things set up or or something clicked for you you know obviously i we don't have enough time to go through everything mm -hmm. and most people can go through the course themselves but what was something that stood out to you specifically that was like a a, a light bulb moment I think there's the connection of the whole business model, um, the the analogy that you give with it, and then putting everything into place. Because I think even when I talk to people now, when they reach out to me um, and they're like, you know, I've heard of it, but it's really confusing. I don't really understand it. And, you know, when you're Googling it all, you're hearing from so many different people of what works, what doesn't work, how to do the steps. And what I loved about the course is that it was a one-stop shop. I mean, you gave us step by step each day what to do, how to create a sales funnel, how to do our email marketing and why it matters. And mm. I feel like that's something I even have to look back on with myself because we can get so zoned into, OK, I've got my, my sales funnel done. That's done. I've set out a few um, emails that are ready to go for those who um, submit their email into my sales funnel. And then I've just got to get these posts going every day. And so we get so caught up into the posts every day that sometimes we forget about the email marketing and mm. how much value that can come from that. And that's, and I'm speaking to myself personally, not to everyone else. Um, I learned so much within these lives of what people are doing. And that was like a, a huge thing for me. And especially yesterday when everything shut down and we don't know what we're doing or how we're going to be able to contact people. I instantly was like, okay, I'm going to go send an email real quick. Let everyone know, hey, Facebook and Instagram are down, but yeah. here's some information that you can use. If you need to message me, just send me an email instead of using those social apps because we don't know when they're coming back. Mm -hmm. So I think just all of the factors that go into it that we may not think of if we're just jumping in without any kind of course to teach us. 
That's interesting. Jessica says, I also find the email marketing to be really hard to keep up with. And I wonder what you mean by that, Jessica. Do you mean that just in the beginning, it's hard to wrap your mind around? Um, or is that because the thing that's interesting about email marketing is that, um, by the way, I think I got it, everybody on the, the FaceTime <laughs> thing. I just actually opened the app here on my phone and just um, uh, quit FaceTime, right? And just <laughs> basically logged out of the thing. So I think I'm good. Thank you for all of your suggestions. Uh, really appreciate it. Sometimes just clicking around and st I always just hit decline, decline, and then it just keeps ringing, you know. Um, but email marketing, I love that you touched on the fact that yesterday social media essentially went down. Facebook and Instagram were like down for a few hours. There was a couple of weeks ago that AT and T, I believe, it was also down for for like a mm -hmm. few hours um and you know the conspiracy theorist came out maybe the end of the world is coming we don't know but um the truth is is that you know you don't own your social media profiles i mean whether the site gets taken down or whether your profile gets taken down and by the way your profile can get taken down for lots of different reasons mm -hmm. um nowadays it's all basically observed and, and kind of managed by artificial intelligence. So if something pops up that's a, a flag, maybe you don't know about it, a word, something that you post, something that you say, your profile could get disabled, it could get permanently deleted. I sort of look at social media profiles as sort of like rental properties. And instead of creating cash flow, they create traffic flow for me. I don't mm -hmm. actually... I'm, I'm just using now rental properties, of course, you own, but imagine if you didn't, right, which is kind of an even cooler concept. What if you could just kind of go squat in a house or go pull up to a house and just and just homestead it, right? Just plant a flag in it and say, this is mine. I'm going to rent it out now for cash flow. Mm -hmm. That'd be pretty cool, right? And if you mm -hmm. lost the house, somebody came along and was like, after a couple of months was like, Hey, you can't be here. You got to leave, but you don't have to give any of the money back. You just have to get out of here and go find somewhere else to homestead, take your flags and get out of here. But you had six months of rental income that was coming kind of passively, somewhat actively, but mostly. Pa well, the same thing is kind of true. It's a, a good analogy for social media profiles and accounts because you don't really own them but you can use them to, to kind of post content on and create traffic, which is the lifeblood of all internet businesses. Now, the problem is, is if you lose one of those, if a platform goes down, whatever, something changes on the platform, what you just touched on is true. You have an email list. Mm-hmm. And you can email these people and still communicate with them. And we have had lots of marketers in our community who have had, when you're aggressively marketing, things happen. Accounts get shut down. They get disabled. They get temporarily disabled. I mean, if you're not having that happen, you're probably not marketing hard enough. Yeah. They still have their email list. And ironically, email is where people tend to go to do business. Mm -hmm. They tend to go to social media to escape and get entertained, they go to their email to kind of do business. And so you can send emails and 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 make sales, essentially. Mm -hmm. And so I, I love that you pointed that out. And the, the woman who had made the comment about email being kind of hard to grasp, I think that it's like a tool or a bike that it is hard. You do, um, you it, it it is, it does take getting used to. Jessica said, I find it's hard to be diligent with copywriting and effective communicating in the emails, like putting my thoughts into the right words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a muscle that you haven't worked. Probably it's sort of like going to the gym for the first time or the second or the third. It's like everything's hard and everything's sore and everything feels awkward. And that is why most people quit before the miracle happens because the miracle is, is, when you actually start leaving the gym feeling refreshed and replenished. And if you don't go, you actually feel like something's missing from your day. 
I'm going to stop there and ask you what's coming up for you, Sarah, in terms of your kind of content creation or email copywriting journey. Is the muscle in getting it used to, has that improved over the last few months for you? Oh my gosh, yes. That's what I was going to say too, Jessica, is that when you're making all of your content through you know, Instagram, TikTok, when you're writing those captions, that's getting that muscle moving for your emails because I felt the same way at, with my emails. I set up like maybe seven that go out when someone first like hops in with that. Yeah. Um, but even then I was just like, what do I write? I don't know what to put because it's all fresh. It's all new. It's all overwhelming. But now that I'm like <clears throat> three months in as far as since I launched, you know, I'm writing content every day, three times a day, sometimes more if I'm trying to batch stuff. And mm. so whenever I wrote that email, I mean, it just felt like, I mean, I, at some point you're just talking to a friend. So you don't have to put too much thought into it other no. than, you know, making sure you do have those those keywords and just making sure you're getting your point across because that's all people want anyway is a friendship rather than a salesman. <laughs> Man, it feels good to throw that hat. <laughs> uh, not that I couldn't have thrown it several times before that, but I was just <laughs> kind of dialed in here with you. What a great point. We really over, we try too hard to be salesy and I mean, we can text our, I mean, come on, ladies, come on, fellas. Are you not, I mean, them thumbs are working all day long on that phone. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, the friends that we're texting, we're just, <laughs> and we're conversating with our friends. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, we just go on and on and on. Guys and gals, it's not, but then, we literally, when we pull up to our computer to write an email, it's like we go, it's like we just fell off the turnip truck, man. We think we need to, we, we go blank. We, we feel like we need to become somebody different, be somebody different. When the point that you make about just writing and communicating to somebody like a friend, copywriting is unique because you almost want to use as a teacher, you'll think this is funny, but I'm sure you're picking up on it. You almost sometimes want to use bad grammar. Mm -hmm. You almost want to kind of go against some of the, the, the kind of main rules of English writing. You don't want big, clunky, chunky paragraphs. Mm -hmm. You want to break those paragraphs up into sentences. So there's lots of white space and they're easy to read. Um, you want to, use slang you want to like you want to write like you're texting a friend mm -hmm. you don't want it to sound corporate -y. you don't want it to sound like another sales pitch so sometimes there's we get into this and we really do too much we overdo it and we we learn oh my god like i need to dial this back like i need to just write to people like I talk mm -hmm. and, and, and make them feel like they're, you want to make them feel like they're reading like a secret text message mm -hmm. from somebody. And it's like, oh, this is interesting. This is different. Right. Um, and, and then all of a sudden your conversions go up and also the aspect of sharing part of yourself. How have you gotten more comfortable with combining the points that you want to make with story and kind of personalizing it and using vulnerability even by sharing parts of yourself and your journey to build connection and and rapport with your with your audience well i i love to tell stories anyway and a big thing for me is making those analogies that people may not think of um so if i had something happen in my day i mean there was even one where i had a dream and I was just like, I'm totally going to talk about this. <laughs> so that way it just makes a connection because you never know what's going to resonate with people. Um, <clears throat> and I think just the big thing is just honesty because mm -hmm. what really set my account to, I mean, I launched December 2nd, the week of January 17th, one of my videos went viral. I went from 80 followers to 5,000 followers in one week um hit my first like few commissions and the whole reason behind it was because so many people 
you know, in, in the wealth niche are doing the side hustle videos, right? Um, how to make side hustle money. And, you know, I was doing those and it, I just never knew. I was like, you know, should I be doing this too or just affiliate marketing? And there was the one that it would show you how to make a book or a journal on Amazon KDP, sell it that way. So I actually did that. I, I, I talked about how to do it. Then I did it and I, I ordered my own proof copy and I loved it. And I was like, I'm going to show this to people and actually mm. show like, Hey, like, you know, people may show you how to do this, but it, but they don't show you a finished product. So yeah. here's my finished product. Here's what it looks like. And it's a creative outlet. If you want to try to make money online and if you need help, come to me and I'll help you. Mm. So my Instagram started booming. How do I do this? How do I do that? I have all these issues with the sizing and because it always seems easy on social media, right? It seems like it's just, you know, one and done, but it's not when you're getting into the, the layers of affiliate marketing, the layers of making a journal, there's all these sizing things that you have to do for you to actually publish it. And that's not always shared. And so, so many people are like, thank you so much for showing a finished product. Thank you so much for sharing your honesty and your struggle with this. And I'm still, that's still why my account is growing. Um, mm. But I am trying to like redirect people, but like, hey, you know, this is great, but I have over 500,000 views on this video and I've sold two. Mm. <laughs> so you can't just make it, you need to market it. So that's also what I'm trying to teach people how to do is whatever product it is that you are promoting, you know, whether you're making a book, because that's what a lot of people will say too. They're like, I've made all these books and none of them sell. And I was like, well, it's a really saturated market. you got to figure out ways of how to get the info out there. Mm. Um, so just trying to come to them from an honest standpoint. And then again, you know, if I have a really good analogy to try to bring something to an understanding with people, it's, it's those like throwing hat moments. It's like, okay, like she just made that click for me. <laughs> and that's yeah. what I try to look for. Yeah, I love that. And I mean, in celebration of that, <laughs> off the backboard, I mean, friends, for example, if you have seen and are considering or are doing side hustle videos, which are, they are a great idea. They're a great example of going into a niche and sharing various tips. That's what social media is for. That's what social media marketing is all about. It's about giving bite-sized samples, sort of like walking through the food court at the mall and, and passing by the bourbon chicken. And then mm -hmm. you take a bite and you're like, damn, I, I want a whole plate of that, right? But they're not putting a plate in front of your face. They're not saying, you know, sit down and eat a whole plate right now. They're just giving you a sample to try to get the juices flowing, get the palate fired up for you to circle back around or for you to take a bite and be like, damn, that's good. Like, I'd like, I'm hungry, actually. Let me get a whole mm -hmm. plate of that. Or the next time you're at the mall, you say, I want to, I want to, I want to get there or I want to have some bourbon chicken or I want to have whatever I sampled. The same thing is true for social media content. And and the same thing is true for every niche. If I'm in the dog training niche, what I'm going to put on my social media profile is a bunch of different tips, tricks, secrets, stories, experiences, a plethora of a variety. There is no rhyme or reason. There is no sequence that you need to put these videos in. It's just a random selection of samples. It's like a charcuterie board, mm -hmm. just throwing shit out on the table your, your social media profile is a charcuterie board of lots of different things for them to pick at and try. Mm -hmm. And with the, so, with the side hustle piece, I love that you took one and actually said, I'm going to do this all the way through. Mm -hmm. You can then double down and create lots of different videos on the same side hustle. Right. You don't even have to be following through with that side hustle and making that your main thing, but by still giving people those options. For example, if you were the charcuterie board seller, you might lay the charcuterie board out and say, look, I want you to try everything. My personal favorite happens to be the salami with this specific cheese with these chocolates after to wash it all down but it's kind of like all good and you should try it and see kind of what resonates with you 
But again, mm -hmm. if you're asking me what my favorite thing on the board is, it's this, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, and that might be true also if I go back to the dog training niche. I just want people to see how this is this is this is transferable there there's probably lo lots of different philosophies or approaches to training dogs right it's not just one size fits all there's i mean i've heard people speak in german i've heard people do there's different cultural things there's different approaches there's different philosophies it's valuable to expose people to those different ideas mm -hmm. and still have this is what i use right because they're going to trust you at the end of the day yeah. <laughs> they're they following you for a reason <laughs> and they trust you more by providing options mm -hmm. if you're only ever talking about one thing then people are not dumb they know there's other options there and they feel curious to find out what those options are mm -hmm. does, does that resonate with you and and is that sort of how you're approaching your content marketing as well yeah, because I haven't, I, I struggled with the side hustle stuff um, at the beginning, you know, trying to do all that research and find it because I'm still just trying to learn affiliate marketing, right? Yeah. So then I'm just like, you know, what do I find? What do I do? What do I share? And then, you know, I just found that it wasn't as um, successful for me because I did feel like it was confusing people. Um, so then if I do share anything now, just like you said, I redirect them. It's like, okay, there's all these things that you can do, but my favorite is this affiliate marketing, making your own digital products, pretty much starting your own online business to where you are in control of what you're doing. Because even still working from home, there's different facets of that where you're like working for a company or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's my aspect of it is just, you know, talking more about like how you can be your own boss at the end of the day. So we, we have even balancing busy life in the title of this episode. I, I talked about that at the beginning. So give us a brief nutshell synopsis of how you are balancing this within your busy life. Well, <laughs> I will say, just like I tell everyone in my content, is that this is not easy. You know, you can't just jump on this and think that you're just going to make money the next day because you're not. You have to figure everything out. And it's a lot for your headspace. You guys talk about mindset. I mean, hello, fuzzy. Yes, you have to figure out your mindset. You have to stay positive. You have to like, you know, um, compartmentalize, you know, the areas because there are times where when you are an entrepreneur and you are just loving it and you're loving what you're doing, you're always thinking about it. And as a mom and as a woman, <laughs> <laughs> I have learned so much through through therapy, through conversations with people is that our minds are always going as women. I can't speak for men. Your, your mind might always be going, Dave. Um, but, you know, I'm at home with my kids. And yeah. so I might be trying to work on something and then he's crying. So I have to go to him. So I have to stop. Yeah. And then I try to pick it back up. So some things might not be at the time that I want to do it. Um and so it's really just blocking out that time working with your spouse if you're married um, or, you know, if you're not married, you're a single parent, you know, maybe working with like in-laws to just find that time because this is doable, but you have to do it in a healthy way or else you're going to get burnout. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'll be honest, like I face those moments sometimes of trying to balance it all because we also just moved to our new house in August. Mm. And I mean, we're like eight months in now and there's still boxes that I haven't unboxed because two months after we moved, I hit the ground running with this business. Mm. So um, it is it is a lot. So just making sure that you are taking care of your of your mental health and blocking out certain times if something's not working and you are struggling. I literally had this conversation with my husband last night. Um, you know, we're trying to figure out a good schedule because he is pretty much working like three jobs in one right now. Wow. So it's, you know, I even have those moments where I'm not a single mom. I have a very supportive husband and he's doing everything to bring home the bacon consistently. Mm. <laughs> and I'm yeah. trying to like still provide that as well. So there's many nights that like he's not there and I'm having to just do all the mom things, but also run a business, but also feel present with my kids. So <clears throat> one of the main things I talk about in my content is that whether you are working a job as a mom and you come home to your kids in the evening or you're working at home as a mom, 
neither one of them are easy. Mm. You're still going to have to carve out that time to be present with your kids because I feel like you can feel more guilt sometimes when you're at home because you're trying to work and they don't understand it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, don't picture this life as if it's going to be hunky dory and you just get to be home and play with your kids all day and make money because that's not the reality. So just making sure that you're aware and carving out that time. So that way you have the best of both worlds. And that's my thing is that, you know, both are hard, but I'd rather try to do a post and be able to sit next to my kids while they're playing blocks in a puzzle as I'm doing it. Whereas if I were in an office all day, I wouldn't have the opportunity to still at least sit with them and be with them in those moments. Yeah. Love that. Darlene says this talk is golden because not getting lost in motherhood, wifehood and entrepreneurship is a great topic. Work has to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's always something to do. I, I yeah. love when you said and if there's not, as you said, I've been around enough women, mothers to know that yeah, you, you are always thinking about what needs to be done, sometimes overthinking. That's okay. That's part of the, the nature. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, us guys tend to sometimes underthink th some <laughs> things. You know, some of us are overanalyzers, but I would certainly yes. say women more so, in my experience. Um, they're nurturing. They want to make sure people are taken care of, the kids are yeah. taken care of. That's in their nature. It's in your they're nature. They're functioning for other people, which is... right exhausting right. for them too. Absolutely. A caretaking, right? Like mm -hmm. taking care of others. Um, one, one kind of just little phrase came up for me as, as you were, as you were talking and talking about hard and the phrase is choose your heart. Mm -hmm. Choose your heart. Everything's going to be hard. Yep. Poverty's hard. Working for people are hard. Working by yourself or for yourself is hard. Mm -hmm. Having kids is hard. Not having kids can be hard too if you want it. I mean, you know, and that may not be a choice. That's probably not a good example. But when it comes to just your business, your career path, how you're going to make your money, you have to choose your hard because. They're both, and some might be harder at the beginning. It's ironic because with entrepreneurship, it's delayed gratification in a lot of time. Mm -hmm. You don't have the steady guaranteed paycheck. And I mean, I, I've often heard that women love that feeling of security. So I don't mm -hmm. know if that resonates with you, but it can be even more I'm more of a risk taker. So that's kind of in my nature. I would think that it's been easier for somebody like me who's kind of comfortable taking risk and doesn't like thrive on security. But if you are somebody, and again, I've heard a lot of women say that and a lot of people um, think that that's one of women's main values just in general. I don't know. You'd have to speak for yourself if that's true for you or not. But if that is true for you, man or woman, entrepreneurship is not going to give you that feeling. No, no. <laughs> you know? and that's so hard for so many people to start because they'll be like, oh, yes, I see what people are doing. I see the thousands of dollars that they're making. I want to do that. But then as soon as they start, they realize all the work that goes into it and nothing's being made. I mean, even right. when I first started, my mother-in-law was like, I thought you said this was only going to be like a few hours a day. Like, I feel like you're working on this all day long. I was like, yeah, but I'm hungry. I, I want this. Like, you know, yes, in the long run, I should only have to work a couple hours a day. But right now I'm building it. I'm right. doing everything I can to make sure that I only have to work a couple hours a day later. <laughs> Reminds me of the great Les Brown motivational speaker. You got to be hungry. <laughs> he says, man, you got to be hungry. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can. I mean, I was the same. I was the same way. I I worked so many hours for so many years. And I mean, it wasn't always because I needed to. It it was because I was hungry. I yeah. I was obsessed. I you know, again, I I and I think this goes back to another one of those common entrepreneur clichés. I'd rather work 80 hours for myself than 40 hours for somebody else. Yeah. There's 
there's truth to that. You know, that's been my experience. It's kind of like, I don't know. I didn't really ever come into this hoping to only work a couple of hours a day. I, I don't re- remember that being my goal. So, so maybe I had different expectations than maybe some people do. I never really looked at any of this ever as a get rich quick scheme. And right. I, I really honestly feel bad for people who do and who kind of have those expectations because yeah, that can be, that can be disappointing. And, you know, over the years I've tried to be more and more transparent while still being a marketer, you know, I mean, it's not a very attractive message to go out and say, Hey, you know, buy this and it's going to be the hardest thing you ever do in your life. (laughs) You know, you've got to kind of mix reality. You got to mix the 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 cons with the pros right because while it might be and i like to say while it's going to be the hardest thing you ever do it's also going to be the most 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 rewarding thing Mm -hmm. you ever do like if you stick with it um but yeah if you have an attitude of like lotto mindset and and you want something to happen fast i also find that in life in general like whatever you try to force doesn't happen like you have to be willing like god the universe whatever is you know whatever you believe typically tends to you know give us things when we sometimes even when we don't want them or when we're not particularly looking for them or trying to force our will on them right Mm -hmm. that's why the old phrase thy will be done is so popular and so true because it's like stop trying to force your will like there's this 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 if if this happened if entrepreneurship and business building happened the way everybody wanted it to happen success wouldn't be that sweet It would just be something everybody's entitled to it, right? Yeah. And so that's well, how like, life works. It's like everyone says it. Like, if it's that easy, then everyone would be doing it. Exactly. So <laughs> there's a reason you have to work for it. So what have you learned about yourself in these last few months doing this? What have you been reminded about yourself? What have you learned about yourself? Can an old dog, new, and I say old dog, I mean, we're both about the same age, I think, um, maybe you're a little younger, actually. Let me see here. Maybe. I just had a birthday. I just turned 31. <laughs> oh, my God. You're so much younger than I am. Um, <laughs> but still, you're mature. You've got a family. You've got, you know some things. You've got some life experience. Some people your age are set in their ways. But mm-hmm. what have you learned new about yourself that's been empowering or interesting over the past few months? Oh, um, I guess just the resiliency and like, even though I feel like I might be breaking at times and it's not so much with, with this business, it's just the, the reality of juggling it all. I mean, we Eggerts, we don't do anything small. You know, when we, when we moved from San Diego to Lynchburg, we were pregnant with our firstborn and didn't really have jobs. We're just trying to figure out what we were doing. My husband was going to school and I was like, I'm gonna be a stay at home mom. Um, and so then we wanted to move back to Tennessee and I was teaching at a school in North Carolina because we live like right near the, the edge of it. Um, got pregnant, you know, had another kid just to have the kid in July, move into a new house in August. And <laughs> like, you know, I think just the resiliency of that, even though I have all these things facing me, I'm asking for more, mm. you know, and I'm, and I'm willing to put in more. And, and, but still learning about myself that I do need to take a step back and figure out what brings me joy outside of being a mom, outside of being an entrepreneur, outside of being a wife. Mm. So, I, so I can have those moments to just sit back and relax and then I can hit the ground running again. So mm. just trying to sit back and find those moments. I love that. And I think we all as parents kind of get, you know, man, men and women, like we get so excited and obsessed about parenthood and then we kind of lose ourselves in it and then we're kind of like wait who am i again like yeah. i mean some people call it an identity crisis call it what you want it's just kind of like reinventing yourself in my opinion it's mm-hmm. kind of like 
yeah, taking a step back, like, what do I want now? Like, what's this next chapter look like? How do I need to reinvent myself? What do I need to change in order to step into the next best version of myself yeah. to be able to now not only sustain and, and, and kind of survive, but thrive with mm -hmm. this new life that I've built. And I, I love that for you. And I love that for everybody who is kind of feet who that resonates with, because that is to me what life is about. Like life to me is about change. Mm -hmm. uh, I love change. I love, and maybe that's, Maybe that's a learned thing. Like, I don't know. Like I, some people, it seems like the majority of people in this world change throws them way off. And it's like, they just stay the same for 30, 40, 50 years in, mm -hmm. in the same job and the same house and the same, 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 same. Um, I'm not judging that. I, that's fine. I, yeah. For me though, what, I got, I like change. I like things to be evolving, not chaotic yeah. change, not traumatic. Yeah. Change. <laughs> well, no. and I think it goes back to the life, like your story, Dave, is that, you know, you, you had to change, right. Yeah. To, right. to get that, the that life was that chaotic you change. At the beginning. <laughs> well, but I think because of that, you've learned that what change can bring you and, and I will say that like, you know, change is hard for my parents because they are the sure. ones who have lived in the same town. They've had the same jobs. And so when all of a sudden I'm going to marry my, you know, high school sweetheart and I'm going to move to San Diego, that was like, whoa, what are mm. you doing? You don't, you don't leave <laughs> this place. Um, and so moving to San Diego was a huge change for me. Culture shock, all the things, trying to figure out who we were as a married couple, what I was going to do with my life. And it's just been changed since then. So yeah, it's not as big of a deal to me as it is to, um, you know, my parents where it's as hard for them. Like there's things I can do much easier than they can just because I've lived a different life. So I do think it just depends on the life that you've had that's prepared you and helped you be able to change and try new things. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. And I find that to be very true. That, that fits for sure. We've got a couple of people relating as well. And thank you all for the amazing comments. We're going to wrap this up here in a moment. Thank you for all the kind, supportive comments for Sarah. She's a rock star, of course. And <laughs> it's wonderful that you all are, are supporting and validating and affirming her. Um, you know, uh, Bree says, I need change as well. If you aren't you can't grow if you aren't evolving. Doing the same thing every day is crazy. Mm -hmm. Interesting perspective. Um, Alexandra says, I'm someone that change scares me, but that's part of working on my mindset because I understand that people need change in order to grow and do better. Tiffany, change is hard, but it is good. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Anna says, a person can change his future by merely changing his attitude. Zafra says, Sarah, what's your skincare routine? <laughs> <laughs> Any, <Thank> tips? You. <laughs> Any tips? Any tips for Zafra? <laughs> Gosh, I don't have anything that's really crazy. Um, sunscreen? Do you wear sunscreen? Like, <laughs> I've heard that's like the skincare tip of like all tips is like, is like wear sunscreen. wear sunscreen all the time. No, I, I wish I had better information to share with you. Um, there's definitely days that I don't like wash my face every day. Um, wow. I, I should, and yeah. there's makeup on clearly good lighting. It all helps. <laughs> but hey, I like underneath you would see, I'm sure you can see it in some of my content videos. I have like hyperpigmentation from my pregnancies. So I mean, I will, I will share what I use, but I don't feel like it's a game changer per se. <laughs> well, well, Melissa says, thank you for your service. As a oh. military family, you relocate constantly. And I, f on behalf of all of everybody here, thank you for your service, your entire family. It's not just your husband. It is you, your children as well, who are making sacrifices in order to serve and protect. And we appreciate that deeply. Thank you. We, You're so welcome. Yeah. Well, my friend, it has been fun. It has been interesting. It's been inspiring. Uh, this has been 
a wonderful conversation, extremely valuable. It's been called a master class by some people in the comments here. And uh, again, we appreciate all those wonderful comments. Uh, hopefully you. you get a chance to go back and, and review a few of them as well, Sarah, mm -hmm. and kind of soak some of that in and realize how valuable you've been and uh, you know how much people have got from this. Um, and hopefully that continues to build your confidence and know that, you know, you have a lot to offer and, uh, we certainly appreciate it. I'd love to have you back on the show in the near future for a follow-up episode. Absolutely. This was fun. <laughs> awesome. And, um, with that being said, my best, to, what's your husband's name? Chris. Chris, my best to you and Chris and your children, uh, stay yes. safe and, um, thank you again and, uh, stay legendary, my friend. We'll do. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Talk to you later, Sarah. All right. Bye. All right, my friends, you can find Sarah over on Instagram at one ready mama. Okay. Spelled exactly how it sounds. No dashes or underscores one. And that's spelled out. O N E one ready mama. M A M A. Uh, beautiful, wonderful episode this morning and um, even better from a, a wonderful uh, military family. Uh, again, thank you, Melissa, for uh, reminding us of that and sending your thanks and allowing me to also give my thanks. Um, thank you all for, um, Bill says it right here, the hardest job in the military is the military spouse. Mm. All right, my friends, what a beautiful episode this morning. Uh, Jessica, hey, how you doing? You're still here. Thanks for your comments earlier and allowing us to uh, give you a little feedback. Um, yes, Tess, so true. Whole family makes sacrifices. All right, my friends. Uh, it's been great. It's been beautiful. It's been inspiring this morning. Thank you to Sarah for a wonderful episode. Great information, like really, um, uh, worth a review, worth a re-listen for those of you who didn't catch the whole thing. Um, we have, uh, all of these episodes, we, we put the audio of them, onto all the major podcast platforms is all you need to do is type in wake up legendary and they should pop up. We usually get the episode up same day. So if you want to review this episode or any of them, you can go out and as you're working out or walking around, you know, maybe that would be helpful for you. Um, remember you can tune in every uh, Monday through Friday as well. Watch us, put us up on your TV. You know how you can do the little, the little thing where you put it up on your TV, um, you could do that uh, and and just kind of have us on as you drink your coffee in the morning or, of course, on your computer or on your phone. But, you know, you don't have to sit there and hold it. Um, plug some headphones in. Just listen, right? One of the reasons why we do this is because combining it with the education, it gives you the stories, the inspiration, the context of how people are applying it. It's really valuable when you combine it with the actual education. One without the other is, you know, it's not a complete package because you they just they just they complement each other so well. OK, so I encourage you, especially if you're going through our curriculum, if you're building, if you're launching, combine that with these episodes. Listen to them. They will they will give you inspiration. They will give you ideas. You will be able to relate to things that people say and go, ah, I'm not the only one. I'm not alone. I'm not alone in feeling that. I'm not alone in experiencing that. And I'm telling you it's priceless. I'm telling you, you will feel supported and you will not feel as alone in this journey as you are sitting alone. I'm sitting alone right now. As I showed you all earlier, I'm sitting alone in my, you know, dance daughter's dance studio slash home office slash gym. This is where I work. And, but when I, when I hear one of the reasons why I love the show after 13 years or so in this business is that I'm still talking to somebody every day who can relate to what I'm going through. Do you know how therapeutic that is? I'm not just doing this for content creation, although it's great content. I'm also doing it because it feeds my damn spirit because it adds a therapeutic value that I'm not alone. It's really, really powerful. So my friends, Hopefully you can tap into some of that value, come back, tune into the show, get some of the connection in, in, in identification that I'm talking about. And with that being said, if you want a text message, um, I'll put it up on the screen. Text WUL to 813-296-8553. 
We'll text you at 10 a.m. in the morning, give you a little link. You can tune in live and spend your mornings with us just like you did this morning. Once again, thank you, thank you, thank you to Sarah for a wonderful episode. And get out of here, my friends. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode. Peace. 